Hey, it's CrossFitTracking.com here for the final review of the Polar Grit X. I've been using it for a multiple of weeks now, tested all the different aspects of it. Heart rate, how the nightly recharge and the sleep goes, different singular workout evaluations, as well as long-term evaluations, as well as recovery aspects, the overall watch design and feel, the screen quality, functionality of the watch, the different things I actually use on a regular basis. And so I'm just gonna sort of share an overview of all these things as well as we're gonna then we're gonna look at hands-on the analysis of the watch just looking at some of the screens of the watch as well as the app as well as sort of comparing it to Garmin side by side just because it's one of their primary competitors so if you happen to like this video please like if you you know have an interest in future updates because I'll be continually testing more devices for the purpose of CrossFit training please uh, subscribe I'm trying to build my subscriber base but with that, let's dive in. So looking at it for first from the workout evaluation and then on to the watch functionality, I found the heart rate sensor and I have heard and seen other reviews that have had better success, that the heart rate sensor is more accurate. So on this particular watch, the Precision Prime heart rate has 10 diodes now lit versus nine. And they use a different color pattern, mostly orange and red with one green in the past that was, you know, mostly green as the primary diode color. But on the heart rate sensor for CrossFit tracking, you can see more of this on crossfittracking.com as I showed a bunch of the workouts. I ran a bunch of tests and I found just relatively just a below average experience. Um, again, other runners have had more success, but mine was just less success than the previous Polar Precision Prime and less success than the Garmin as far as accuracy. So the overall, I just evaluate it in three basic components. The average heart rate as it compares to a chest strap, how much time you spend in the highest heart rate zone, zone five compared to a chest strap, and the overall trip score. So I can use, I've been using an H10 chest strap to compare it so I can give a direct comparison of how it compares on the workout evaluation for the overall cardio strain and load that they're saying that it provided just using the optical heart rate sensor. Um, so looking at average heart rate accuracy, the average heart rate was about 90% accurate with the chest strap, which is great, but that doesn't take into account the amount of exertion. So they got the average heart rate correct, but the exertion level was too, a little bit too low. So the amount of time spent in zone five in the highest heart rate zone or the most strenuous zone, I'm only getting about 32% accuracy. So it's missing about 68%. As far as TRIMP goes, the evaluation of your sort of cardio load score um, to evaluate the workout, I'm only getting about 70% accuracy. And this is actually more important because that means for load tracking and seeing how much strain you're putting on your body over a longer period of time, you're missing about 30% of the load that your body is undergoing, which evaluates obviously how much you're improving and growing in your overall fitness, as well as just in that individual workout. So from a singular workout evaluation, it does a good job is obviously we're tracking CrossFit workouts. We're not looking for cadence or pace or elevation changes. We're primarily just looking for the exertion of the heart. So obviously that ties right into the optical heart rate sensor. Um, it does connect to Bluetooth chest straps does not connect to Ant Plus, but obviously, as I've said in every video, you wanna to connect to a chest strap for high level accuracy to be able to evaluate your training over a long period of time. But the trip score I found to be effective. I don't find it to be as effective as Garmin in one point about the heart rate accuracy. I, I'm seeing it about as half as accurate on the amount of zone five or highest heart rate period um, in a workout is Garmin. So Garmin was tracking about 60% accuracy or 64% accuracy, whereas this is tracking about 32% accuracy. So if in a workout, just in rough numbers, if I did, you know, 12, let's just say 10 minutes, if I did 10 minutes in the zone five on a heart rate strap, I'd get about six minutes on the Garmin and three minutes on the Polar Grid X. Um, the single workout evaluation calculates things by a TRIMP score. That's the overall exertion of your heart, your cardio level exertion. Um, I do like the Garmin's version of anaerobic and aerobic training effect, and it si simply gives you a scale of zero to five. So the TRIMP has a wide variety. You can get anywhere from you know zero to, I, I don't know, I haven't gotten much over 300. Um, the Murph workout that I did put me at like 270, which is the highest I've ever gotten. Most typical workouts with a 20 minute Metcon with the overall time just warming up and doing some strength training. I'm getting in the 110s for overall trip score. But over what, oh, and we'll show it on the app, but the overall 
summary though is that the load calculation I find to be really effective. So looking at the recovery from a specific workout, like on the Garmin system, you get a recovery time after you finish your workout and that recovery time stays active in your training status icon. Um, but here on the Polar, you actually can't find the recovery information unless you first fully sync it with the Polar Flow app from the device, from the chest strap or whatever, and then pull up Polar Beat and sync it there and allow the workout details to come through on Polar Beat and then you'll get a recovery score. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, as far as long-term load tracking and evaluation goes, I feel like it is awesome how they have set it up for visibility. So you can look at it week at a glance at how your overall load is affecting your training over time. And the way they do it is through two metrics called strain and tolerance. The strain is how much cardio load you're placing on your body over a seven day period. And their tolerance is your overall fitness level, how much your body can handle from a strain perspective. And that's a 28 day evaluation. And then based on how much strain divided by the tolerance, shows how much um, load or where you're at in the growth process, where you're productive, where you're over overreaching or whether you're underproductive and detraining. Um, so anything over one is productive. Anything over one point something is, you know, overreaching and nearing risk. If you get near two, it says you're going to have risk of injury. Um, but I feel like you'll see it in a second on the app. It's really great how they laid it out and how they did it even compared to Garmin. One thing that was interesting is I took off 10 days because of an injury and everything just sort of dropped off a cliff. So it sort of said my strain level obviously came down because over seven days, you know, strain level came down, but it took a long time to build the tolerance level back up. And so that was sort of interesting. I'll show that on the device as well. Um, the overall wellness in built into the watch is basically the nightly recharge where it evaluates how effective your sleep was, as well as your autonomic nervous system recharge based on some internal heart rate variability and beat to beat measurement calculations compared to some averages. I feel like it's very useful information. One slight problem is with the nightly recharge, it's only tracking for the autonomic nervous system recharge, it's only tracking four hours of sleep, typically an hour after you've fallen asleep for the next four hours. Um, whether that's accurate, if you're not looking at the whole span of time and evaluating it from that standpoint, that's hard to say but they're giving you a sleep score based on sleep components in great detail compared to long-term 30-day averages, which I feel like is great. And so on the sleep evaluation, I do love the sleep score. Garmin gives you a static information like, you know, REM, deep, light, you know, awake. Whereas Polar takes all the tracking components and compares it to past averages and gives you a final sleep score for the night, which is very helpful. Now on to the watch specifics itself. Looking at the weight, the design, the feel, the strap, um, obviously it's 47 millimeters. They say 13 millimeters thick, but in my measurements, it's closer to 14 and a half to 15 millimeters in thickness. So it stands out on your wrist, feels more like wearing a Garmin Fenix 6, which obviously has a you know thickness of 14.4 or 14.5 or something like that. But it feels about the same there. The weight is only 64 grams, so the weight is overall good. The strap is a textured strap. I'll show it in a second. I am having some cracks in the strap after four weeks of use. So that's a little bit surprising. I've never had that happen with the previous strap. And even on testing the Polar Titan V, um, the Polar Vantage V Titan model, which had the same textured type of design, it didn't have any cracks. Um, screen quality, <clears throat> they have increased the quality of the colorization. So the blacks are more black and the colors are more rich, but we are still having the same problems with brightness. So. As I've said in a number of videos, I track everything based on a light meter to tell what the brightness is, and you can compare it. So if you look at <clears throat> the brightness of just the watch face on some known devices. So on the 245, it's pumping out about nine lumens. On the Coros Apex Pro, it's pumping out about 14 lumens. And on the 945, at 100% brightness, it's pumping out about 30 lumens. So on the full watch face with the button pressed, you're getting about eight lumens on the Grid X, but with just the wrist raise backlight, you're getting about 0.5 lumens, barely readable from a light meter. So obviously that shows that the difficulty of reading some information on the screen with just doing a wrist raise and the dim backlight that comes there is problematic. I'm finding it hard to read some of the information on the screen without going and pushing the button. Um, I reached out to Polar, hopefully they'll do an update that'll allow it, but it's been there, the same problem with the Vantage V, Vantage M series. 
So <clears throat> hopefully that'll improve because it is problematic and I find the overall brightness to be minimal but decent when you push the button for the backlight, but ineffective and way too dim on the wrist raise backlight. From a watch functionality standpoint, notifications, <clears throat> customization. On the notifications, I'm finding them just to come in infrequently. I'd say about 50% accuracy. It's very spotty. Um, sometimes they arrive and sometimes I get the same notification buzz and it'll be the same notification over and over again. Obviously you could go and clear out the notifications, but you shouldn't have to do that. It should just be telling you when the notification comes in and then not telling you again, no future buzzes. Um, there is a better speed at which the processor moves on the Grid X. So on the Vantage V and the Vantage M and Ignite, I was noticing some lag time between screens. So you'd move <clears throat> and then the information would slowly appear. But here it's faster. It's not as zippy as some of the other devices like the Koros and the Garmin series, but it is better. One thing you'll, I'll find is that from push, pushing the buttons and I'll show it a second, um, when you have a bunch of information, you're trying to scroll down to see the information, you can't push the button very fast. It'll basically just stop and you have to wait a second and then push the button again and it'll go back down. So it's a little bit of a button to movement lag time or issue there. Um, but with the screen, obviously it is a touch screen. You can scroll down. That hasn't been anything of any kind of problem. Screens I use, so it basically doesn't come with customizable watch face screens, but it has basically watch face face information you can view at a glance. So there's like seven different screens you can view at a glance. The only ones that I'm finding myself using is typically in the morning, I'll, I'll look at the nightly recharge and I'll just leave that up. It'll show how much nightly recharge. And then I'll look at my activity. So the activity is not just steps, it's steps and calories burned and how much if you did a workout overall activity for the day and you have a certain goal. I like that a lot throughout the day. And then the load is visible on the watch. It's not on the Ignite, but it's built in on the Grid X. So you can see your load calculation. It shows you the bar, whether you're overreaching, productive, you know, detraining, and you can click in and see more information there. Um, the apps, overall, the app is, is very easy to use. I don't find the information broken down as clearly as I do with the Garmin ecosystem. Um, the app is very easy. And again, I love how they've evaluated and visualized the load tracking over time. And I'll show you that. Battery life, another really big issue. It's rated for seven days of just general watch use. This is a CrossFit training site, so I didn't tre test the length of time. You could run a GPS to see if it would hold up to 40 hours like it's supposed to. But just looking at it on having an hour long workout, maybe having some minimal GPS use, using it over time, keeping the heart rate on. So I did do that. Um, keeping a do not disturb on at night from like 10 to six. But I'm getting about 19 to 20% burn rate per day. So it's really coming in at just under five days on an average for the length of time before it needs a recharge. The cost $429 reasonably priced considering some of the competition and some of the things it can do if you are a runner or a triathlete, it's a multi-training, you know, can do multi-sport. Um, <clears throat> so looking at all those things, let's look at the hands-on of the watch as well as the app side-by-side -side with the Garmin system. And we'll get into some details there um, and we'll go from there. But just to give you sort of a summary, I would say that there's some work that needs to be done just on the watch functionality and the notifications and the backlight. There's some work that needs to be done a little bit on the heart rate sensor, but you can't change that. And a lot of times CrossFit workouts are gonna screw that up anyway, so you should use a chest strap. I find some of the information on some of Polar's watch out, workout evaluation screens not be as useful or well broken down. Um, but overall, I feel like it's a great device at the price point, better than the M and obviously cheaper than the, the Vantage V. So this would be the better choice for a CrossFit workout or a CrossFitter in general. Um, I still do prefer the Garmin system, specifically the 245, 945 and Phoenix 6 series. If I'm looking at the price for the value and the customization you can get, as well as the overall functionality of the watch on a day-to-day -day use. It's a great watch. You know, that's how it compares to the rest. Let's dive into the hands-on. Okay, so getting into the hands-on of the watch as well as the app and the overall experience there. Um, again, the heart rate sensor, I gave you the sort of summary components. You can see the lights are a different color than they were in previous Precision Prime. Instead of having uh, red and green around the outside, they have red and orange and one green in the middle. They are activating 10 diodes versus uh, the rest. 
And I'll just go ahead and give you, give get into the overall design and looks of it there. So as we can see, you know, there's the backlight. Um, you know, there's obviously like there's the dimness issue when you do a wrist raise. So it's on there. You can't quite tell. Um, but the uh, size of it is 47 millimeters by 13 millimeters. But obviously when I've shown in other videos, check out the other videos for seeing it compared to a multiple of other watches. It is a considerably thick. Hey, it's just sort of an insert into the review. There are a couple things that I missed, but also I wanted to do a measurement just because there is some question as to how thick the Polar Grid X is. So I just wanted to put it to a clear test. So if you measure it just using a typical digital, digital scale, um, the actual thickness of the device is about 13.7. Make sure you can read that. But if you take into account the size of the heart rate sensor, it's 15.7. So it's a far cry from 13. And if you compare that to the Phoenix 6 series, um, it's like everybody's doing the same thing where they're just tracking the thickness without measuring to the heart rate sensor. It's 14.9. And if you take into account the heart rate sensor, it's 16. So again, the Polar Grid X, as far as a true thickness, is 15.7 millimeters. It's tracking about the same on the, um, the width um, watch compared, and it uses the 22 millimeter quick release. As I mentioned in the video, what I'm having happen on the straps is something I've not seen before, where I'm getting these cracks in the watch. Um, not had that happen before, reached out to Polar to see if there's anything they can do to um, correct that. Um, but obviously, you know, getting into the watch just functionally, you know, you can swipe up to see your notifications and you can delete them there. They should automatically appear. And as soon as they come in, if you do a wrist raise, you'll see them there. You have a few different basic screens that I don't really use, so like the current heart rate. You can dive in and see your average throughout the day as well as your low. Um, this is your training load, which I do like a lot. It gives you your strain over the last seven days compared to your tolerance over the last 28. Um, shows you this pretty screen of where you're at in the production cycle. You have your activity, which, you know, when you go into that, you can see, you know, how active you were today with steps, calories, and just overall active time. But I feel like this is a good measure of the activity of the day. Um, this is just sort of a standalone watch face. You can get the weather. I haven't found it to be, because the watch has a little bit of difficulty connecting to the phone, sometimes the information is not as up to date, um, but it is great that it's there. You can get the high low, you can get expectations for rain, humidity, as well as a forecast in the hours, as well as forecast over days. So great that that information is now available as a widget. Here's Fitzpark. You know, as I really haven't used this as much. It'll give you sort of a cardio goal and it'll give you a strength goal some days, depending on how well your sleep is, how you know recovered you are. Um, and then it'll give you a mobility goal. And if you work out really hard, it'll transition to mo mobility goal um, options. I do like the fact that you could do mobility dynamic or mobility static, and you can go in, you can see just a series of exercises and how long it'll take to get through those exercises. So that's really helpful. I don't think, I think that's probably the only benefit or piece of FitSpark that I would find useful is doing some mobility after a hard workout. So here's the nightly recharge, obviously I had a bad night of sleep. Um, and the way it calculates that is just through the ANS, the Autonomic Nervous System Recharge, as well as the Sleep Charge. And it gives you those numbers there. It's great that it's in the watch. It's not, you know, it's no sleep information in the watch on the Garmin system. And you can look at all your stats here, as we'll see in a second, on the app itself. Um, so I tend to look at that in the morning, obviously, and I might just leave it up for a little bit, but it's not as useful afterwards. The log, I don't really find this to be beneficial. I like to look at the app. If I'm gonna look at my training over a period of time, and then we're back to the beginning. So overall, great design build. I feel like it's sort of like a tank, like it could take a beating. I do like this design better than the Vantage series or the Ignite when it comes to both looks as well as, you know, functional heavy design when it comes to CrossFit training. So I like that a lot. Um, now looking at the app, and you can see a few basic things. Let's see if I can get this to show more, a little more clarity on the information. Um, so you start here, this is your basic overall daily activity, and you can look at it, your heart rate over time. Um, 
I've done a specific video of the Garmin versus the Polar app experience side by side, so that's worth checking out. You get your summary of stats, not a lot of useful information, and I don't like how Polar summarizes everything in one big colored screen like they do red on the workouts, blue for the day. Um, but still, either way, you can look at it you know, in different time periods. You can look at it week or month. This is not as useful like to look at necessarily. The sleep is the very useful part. Um, or I should say the nightly recharge. See here, I had a poor night of sleep, but it does go through on the autonomic nervous system. It, heart rate averages, beat to beat interval averages, heart rate variability and breathing rate. So it takes all of these things into account. So Garmin will tell you respiration and even give you your pulse ox or SpO2 blood oxygen level throughout the night. Um, but Polar takes it and provides it in a score based on averages, which is a useful way to approach sleep. And then the sleep charge here, You'll get the you know specific stats, and you can look at you know sleep from another day. When you compare this to Garmin, um, so if I compare it to let's say sleep because I had a problem with my watch last night, sleep and the other nights, you just get this stages of sleep: deep, light, REM, awake. You can do the pulse ox and the respiration, um, but it doesn't give you any kind of sleep score. So you can compare these two sort of side by side. This is yesterday's and this is yesterday's, but um, obviously this night it said only had 39 minutes of deep sleep. It has been averaging about the same amount of time on the Polar versus the Garmin. This was testing the Phoenix 6X, X, so a very large watch, so maybe that had something to do with it. Um, but the sleep score right here in the middle is great, and then you can look at it at a glance to see how your sleep, you know, is trending over time and what your overall health is looking like. Compare the health rating. So this does the health rating when it comes to a nightly recharge. And you can see that over time, how your nightly recharge is looking for any singular night. Garmin does it a little differently in some of the calculations because you can go into your body battery. So you can see you regenerate over a period of time, but based on the level of stress or a particular workout in the day, how your body is depleted based on the day's activity and how hard it was. So I like this better as an overall wellness assessment because it takes into account the stress or strain of your day, similar to the WHOOP band. So body battery to me is, is very functionally useful. I wish Garmin would update their sleep components to calculate sleep score and have those two in tandem. But for right now, this one, you know, obviously it takes into account whether you had a really stressful day. That is a, you know, a primary factor over just the regeneration throughout the night. So looking at the training, you can see a number of different things. So um, I'll look at a couple of different aspects. So in looking at the training over time, so this was done off the chest strap. You can't get the right assessment for heart rate, but you do get the TRIMP, which is the Training Load Pro. So how much strain your heart was under, totaling any other workouts shows how much strain you're on for your load calculation. But this shows your cardio load, your TRIMP. You can see your average heart rate. And in a typical workout, um, whatever that is. So this is a summary from yesterday. So you can see the training zones. This is actually worthwhile to see. I thought I had deleted this. Typically I'll do one on the watch while doing one on the chest strap and then just delete the watch one because it's not as accurate. But you can see how the heart rate fell a little bit lower and the amount of time in the peak zone was lower and the tramp was lower relative to what it was on the chest strap where it was running higher. You can't quite see that here. Um, because it doesn't give you the zones when it's porting over from Polar Beat. Um, but you can see the tramp was 80 versus 66 and the heart rate here is 141 versus 135. Um, but this is how the workouts look. If you're doing running, see, for some reason it just deleted there because I had actually deleted it. You get a lot of stats. This is one of the problems with summary of information on the Polar app system. You get a lot of stats for a run. I was just doing a, a warm up run because you have to do that with some of the Garmin tracking system. So it's it's just a lot of information on a big red screen. So if you were to compare that to the Garmin here, this just shows you some of the, some, the differences in evaluating a workout. It shows you the distance and the details, but then it goes through and it shows you your pace, your heart rate, but it summarizes it by item type. So you have all this information, but you can just see it more in a picture at a glance versus on the Polar, you just get a lot of information. You can go down lower and you can see the energy used, you can see your route, and you can even see some of the, um, oops, 
some of the other components, so the power component, the speed component, and the heart rate component. So you see that over time, but all this information could be summarized a little bit more effectively, if, like in the Garmin system. And then you compare side by side with a CrossFit workout. So you get that summary of information versus the Garmin expression of the same CrossFit workout. Here, this was connected to a chest strap, but you get your heart rate, training effect again this is versus the trimp on the polar so the polar will say here it is the trimp high load 80 here on the on the garmin it's showing 3.7 aerobic and 2.0 anaerobic so that's more useful information plus it's a set scale versus the trimp which is sort of an unlimited scale you can see your time in the zones this was using a chest strap so it's going to obviously be accurate and then you get into load tracking so on the load tracking itself so on the same summary this is like your workout log It'll have your overall load summary detail, and you can click into the productive, and you can see your load for the week. And you can see it across time, how your load is changing. This is not as great, but this is fantastic. So you can see your load over a long period of time using multiple devices. So this goes back a while, different devices I've tested. Um, one thing I mentioned in the previous video, the sort of face-to-face -face portion of the video, is that I took 10 days off and you can see that my strain dropped as well as my tolerance dropped. I came back with a double workout on that Friday that I returned. And you can see just how this looks over time as each of the cardio scores pulls your strain up and your tolerance gradually pulls up over a 20-day 28 day moving average. This is visually great if you compare it to Garmin's version of training. So on Garmin's version of the training status, you go into the load and you still don't get the picture screen until you get into the seven day load. So you can see it tracking over time and building, but it's just sort of a simple summary and you don't see the components. With the 945 and the Phoenix series, you get this exercise load. This page is not filled in on a 245. And you can see the load score you got for each of the workouts, 84, 112, 42, 617, that was Murph. Um, and then even within these, you can jump into a singular workout and see its overall impact. So looking at Murph specifically, I thought this was a great evaluation. I ran two different Garmin watches versus a chest strap and it actually tracked highly accurately. So when you look here, um, back to this score, you can see that all these red dots are the amount of strain per day and you can see this one load was 248. So I was off the charts, it's way up there in the top. But either way, so that was the Murph strain on my body. So it gave me a score of 248 and that bumped obviously, you see the purple line jump up and you see the tolerance line slowly jump up. Um, but this is just visually great when compared to the Garmin type of tracking here where you just see, you can see your load score over a period of time and you see your seven day sort of trending, your green bars is, you know, obviously it says I'm training high and it's unfortunate because I was, I've been testing a number of different devices. So it does not link the load tracking per device. It just links it by device. It does transmit some of the information so that when you start a new device, it does start at the same spot, but it doesn't look very useful um, when you're tracking it across multiple devices. So this just sort of gives you an idea of how the app looks. You know, again, if you just sort of compare the summary of stats that Garmin gives you, they do break it down by category. You can click into any one of these versus the Polar, which will give you summary of just details of the day, and you can't click into any one of these. You can click into the summary of the day by looking at heart rate, and you can look at periods of time over the week. You can look at your sleep over you know periods of time throughout the week as well, but as far as useful information, this just gives you just sort of a blurb of information versus the Garmin, which gives you detailed information um, all throughout. But just to give you sort of a comparison of one versus the other, as each of them sort of look at, you know, workouts, you can see, you know, the obviously when I did Murph, this is how it looked. It doesn't give you any specific special information except for that super high trimp score. And there's the heart rate. And that looks almost exactly like the Garmin, um, which somehow the Garmin just tracked well. I guess there wasn't as much wrist flex. I had strapped the watches down. I tested it against a Phoenix 6 as well as a 945. And they had basically the same scores. Um, but... This gives you the Garmin ecosystem overview, as well as how it looks when you're tracking it 
you know, on the watch and looking at the details on the watch. Um, all in all, I say the Grit X, like I said before, is a great overall watch. Within the Polar line, this would be my preferred watch for CrossFit tracking because of its size and build and strength quality, as well as the clarity of the screen, the colors, as well as just the functional ways that Polar tracks your load and details there. Again, I think they have some room to grow versus Garmin. I still think Garmin sort of leads the way. If I was doing a true CrossFit evaluation and picking a watch to use, I'd probably would use the Phoenix 6. Um, because of all the customization and other details, but the Grid X has been a great device so far, and I feel like Polar's in the right direction with continuing to update their accuracy as well as the quality of their products. So again, CrossFitTracking.com, thanks so much for watching. A couple things I just wanted to mention. Uh, obviously, we have, this is, you know, my latest test device, and it's one I'm going to keep for long term because it has the clear black screen, so you don't have bluish colorization. It's a Garmin Phoenix 6 uh, sapphire um, and I had to make sure that it was going to have the right screen but I just wanted to show you the wrist raise so the wrist raise is on here on the polar that's why you see the battery icon and obviously this is the 50% brightness on the Garmin but again wrist raise is on can't quite see it see that's what happens in low light um, so that's the differences there and then the other thing I was going to note about the differences between the primary products as well as some of the metrics Polar, I mean uh, Garmin obviously allows for music and you can connect to Bluetooth uh, headphones so you can listen to music if that's of interest to you um, they both have barometric altimeters but Garmin will count your stairs so you'll be able to see stairs tracking Polar just uses the data for workout elevation changes and there's a difference between um, how they track VO2 max so on the Garmin, you just basically do a five minute run and you're gonna get your VO2 max score as long as you go for five minutes. And you actually have to run for five minutes to get your training status icon to populate on the main screen. So you can still get your load tracking, all that stuff will happen, but you wanna run a couple times a week, a half a mile. That's what I just do for a warm up before hitting a wad. Um, and it'll you know, track. And the interesting thing about where it's found in the Polar is you basically have to go in to do a fitness test. It uses the heart rate monitor built in. It basically has you just lie down for five minutes. Um, ironically, I just did this, and you know I've been intermittent fasting and drinking only black coffee, So, uh, but it's surprisingly within a similar range of the two. So 48, very good. So close, close together. Um, and then the last thing I didn't review in looking just at the uh, Polar Grid X, I didn't review fuel-wise. Um, obviously, I was tracking a lot of these workouts through the H10 chest strap and just using that data on Polar Beat. Um, and I'm going to add something at the end of this whole review that shows you what it looks like when you find um, your uh, recovery time built into it. But anyway, um, I didn't use fuel-wise because I didn't feel like it was as pertinent to CrossFit training. Obviously, to those that are doing distance running, it's, it is, but didn't use full fuel wise, but just wanted to give you an exact measurement of the width of the, you know, the thickness of the device, as well as talk about a couple of different aspects. Now let's continue. So with one thing you'll see is one thing I forgot to mention is where you find recovery times within the polar ecosystem. So here we're just in the training log. You know, you can just log over to the training log tab at the bottom and you can see the workouts for this week. Um, so you could go into one workout and you can see just the basic stats um, that it was a uh, tramp of 80 and you actually have to upload the workouts into the polar beat app so here you see that same workout and right in the middle here you'll see the demanding 23 hours so that's where it logs the recovery time for whatever reason you have to first have it come from you know syncing it with the polar flow and then uploading it to the polar beat and you'll get those stats you don't get the other stats though it doesn't translate over for whatever reason but you'll get the demanding here and you can look at um, say like a significantly demanding workout and ironically it doesn't always transmit over but if you look at Murph um, so obviously the trim score was 248 here in the middle you go back to the polar beat app and you find the Murph app Murph workout here over eight days. So the Garmin said four days. So it's obviously an extremely hard workout, but, um, you know, you can go in and you can see the same stats for any particular, see it says reasonable 11 hours. Um, this one for whatever reason did not give a, uh, 
recovery time load, but most all of them will work and transmit over. As you can see in the middle of each of these pages here, this is more of a reasonable one, one day 16 hours from a 57 minute workout. So that's where you find it in the um, Polar Beat will host the recovery time period um, so that you can track your recovery time. So I just wanted to add this in at the end of the video. Again, crossfittracking.com. Thanks so much for watching.